By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is a Tuesday and that means that we are going to continue with our The Dark Tournament. We're already in the semi-finals. Can you believe that? If you've missed any of the previous games and you want to have a look back before you dive into the semis, there's a playlist popping up right now. Click on there and that will show you all the games thus far in this tournament. And like I said, this is the semi-finals. And in the semi-finals, we're going to look at Aryan, who's going to take on Frank. And it's actually a mirror match. Can you believe that? It's black-green versus black-green. And this has proven to be a very strong combination in a the dark only environment probably because of dark heart of the wood i mean that's one of the main reasons and of course ashes to ashes and all the green beefy creatures anyway um who will win this it's really the the a coin flip since it is a mirror match um, and before I dive into um, the, the deck tech, when we go and look at both these decks, I've got really nice deck photos. I would just like to point out, as always, that you can also go straight to the games. How can you do that? Check the description below. There you will find several timestamps, including a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. I'm going to start with the deck of Aryan. Let's take a look at his brew. And here we see the deck of Aryan with his beautiful Mr. T playmat. It's, it's always cool to see that. Um, now, this is really a strong deck, black and green. What makes black and green in the dark so strong? First of all, you've got the perfect ramp card in the form of Elves of Deep Shadow. Second of all, you've got tons of strong creatures. Spitting Slock, Wormwood Tree Folk, Eater of the Dead. All these cards include are included here. An interesting include, by the way, here is Bog Imp. One black and one for a 1-1 one, one flyer. Flying is a fantastic evasion mechanic in general, but especially in the dark only, because you only have three creatures with flying. So that means that when you get a flyer on board in the dark, it's probably unblockable. Now, another, another couple of great cards that make this color combination so strong is, of course, Ashes to Ashes. The instant, or sorry, I should say the sorcery for, um, for two black and one. And Ashes to Ashes removes two target non-artifact creatures from the game. You do take five damage, of course, when you play it. But it is a guaranteed two for one. Well, guaranteed, your opponent needs to have two creatures on board. But in this format, that's really creature heavy, that is very likely to happen. Now, the cool thing here is the synergy between Dark Heart of the Wood and Ashes to Ashes. Dark Heart of the Wood is definitely an all-star in both of these decks. This card is going to be so important. It's an enchantment. That means you cannot remove it. Remember, we're playing the Dark only. There is no enchantment removal. In general, this is not really a big deal, right? Because there are not that many strong enchantments when you're playing the dark only for example blood moon is not as strong in a the dark only format where maze of if is restricted you can only play one maze but a card like dark heart of the wood really really shines in a format when there's no creature removal what does this card do one black uh one green enchantment you may sacrifice the forest to gain three life it's a very simple enchantment you may think Okay, but you got a second land and you only get three life back. That's not a good deal. Well, if you're in mid game or late game and your ashes to ashes can make the difference, you can compensate the loss of life by sacking forests. Another way you can use this is, of course, by drawing cards. There's a book of Ras in here, six to cast, pay two and pay two life to draw a card. Well, with uh, Dark Heart of the Wood, you can sack your excessive forests and basically trade them for cards. And of course, life will gain you time. So if you're under pressure, if you just need a couple of more turns to get everything sorted out, or if you need an extra combat swing, remember, the, both of these decks are full of creatures. You can just gain that extra life and then swing in. It's kind of like a time walk almost of the dark, right? It buys you time with time. You can get extra combat steps, extra draw steps. You can eventually win the game. This, this card is key here. Uh, another maybe nice card here to, uh, to point out is Word of Binding. I think Word of Binding uh, is just really a really good card. Um, it's a card that actually defeated me uh, against a, a green and uh, black player in this tournament. It's two black and X to, to cast. Unfortunately, it's a sorcery. It would have been even better as an instant. And it X target creatures become tapped. So what you can basically do is that you can tap 
all of his blockers right and then get in for an alpha strike and win the game. Now, a really uh, funny card in this deck, or well, I should say it's a beautiful card, but um, uh, it's interesting to see it. It's the first copy that I see in this tournament is the card Season of the Witch. Three black to cast, it's an enchantment, and it reads, at the end of each player's turn, all of his or her untapped creatures that could have attacked but did not are destroyed. Right? And then you've got to pay two life during your upkeep or Season of the Witch is destroyed. So the cool thing about Season of the Witch is you can force your opponent to keep attacking with everything so that he's stepped out and then you can attack him after that. And the nice thing is you control the Season of the Witch. You can decide just to take two life and the Season of the Witch destroys itself in its upkeep so then you don't have to attack during your combat phase. So... It is a pretty cool card, actually, to look at. And I think um, maybe Uncle Istvan would have been a nice inclusion in this deck, looking at Season of the Witch and Uncle Istvan, uh, kind of that combination, but uh, that's not in here. When we look at the sideboard, we see some interesting choices as well. I see a Banshee, which could be quite relevant in this matchup. And I also see, um, let me think, what is that uh, card called again? They have Forest Walk, um, Scarwood Bandits. So it's a 2-2. It's got Forest Walk, and it also has an ability where you can pay green and two and tap it, and you can take over an artifact of the opponent. Now, taking over the artifact of the opponent actually is not that relevant in this matchup. What is relevant? The Forest Walk. Remember, both of these players are playing black and are playing green. That means that with a Forest Walker, you can deal damage. Talking about Forest Walk, Wormwood Tree Folk, I believe both of these players play a full play set of Wormwood Tree Folk. That is going to be a key card as well. Two green and three and it's a 4-4 body, and for 2 green you can give it a Forest Walk, and for 2 black you can give it Swamp Walk. So basically, if you've got enough mana, this is an unblockable creature on both sides of the table. So this mirror match, I mean, it's going to be exciting. So this is the deck of Aryan. Let's take a look at the Brew of Frank and see if there are any major differences. Let's go. And here we see the black and green deck of Frank, and it's quite interesting. I'm seeing a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Now let's first take a look at what is similar between these two decks. Both players play with Elves of Deep Shadow, of course, understandable. Full play set, this is such a strong card in this matchup. Can you imagine playing Spitting Slug turn early, Wormwood Tree Folk turn early, uh, playing Ashes to Ashes in turn two if that's relevant, you know? So everything comes sooner with your Elves of Deep Shadow. Also, he's playing completely understandable with Spitting Slug like Aryan. He's playing with Wormwood Tree Folk like Aryan. Uh, he's playing with Four Ashes to Ashes. So those cards are all the same. Now, a Dark Heart of the Wood, of course, is also the same. Again, it's going to be a key card in this deck. Now, let's look at the differences because there are some interesting differences here. The main thing that I noticed is that Frank is not playing Tracker Main. Instead, he's playing with Land Leeches. He has two or, or three trackers in the sideboard. I think after game one, he will definitely board those cards in. Um, Tracker would be a great card to play main here to kill those Bog Imps. Bog Imps are uh, flying creatures that Aryan is playing four of that we don't see in the deck of Frank. So those Bog Imps are unblockable. Look at Frank's cards. He's got no flyers. The only thing main that he has against the Bog Imps are Banshees. And Banshees, they are slow. Two black and two to cast for an O1 one creature. X and tap. Banshee does X damage. Uh, to any target and also uh, X damage to you round it down right so um, le oh, let me let me rephrase this because Banshee is um, kind of an interesting interesting card so X and tap right Banshee does X damage half of that rounded up it does to you and half of that rounded down it does to any one target right so let's say you're paying four mana and you're tapping the Banshee, then you take two damage and you can deal two damage to any target. So you can kill, for example, a Bog Imp. You can also do that by paying two. Two and tap, you take one damage and you can deal one damage to any target. So Banshee is definitely a strong card, but like I said, it's it comes in at turn four. If you've got an Elves of Deep Shadow or a Flower Stone, maybe it comes in you know, a turn early, turn three, but it's slow, it takes your mana, I mean, you not, you cannot cast anything probably the turn that you're using Banshee, um, so it's it's more useful for, you know, the late game, I would say, and, and interestingly enough, Banshee is one of those cards that hurts yourself. You can use Dark Heart of the Wood, of course, to sacrifice a forest, gain life, so it doesn't really matter that Banshee hurts yourself because you've got Dark Heart of the Wood. So again, because of Dark Heart of the Wood, you're enabling Banshee. Banshee becomes useful. Same thing can be said, of course, for the Ashes to Ashes. 
Now let's look at some other differences. Uh, he's playing with Barrel's Cage. Barrel's Cage, an artifact from the dark. These are two Italian copies. Uh, Barrel's Cage, 40 cast, 3, and you don't have to tap at this important 3. Target tapped creature does not untap during its next untap step. So that means that if Aryan has attacked with a bunch of creatures, he can use the Barrel's Cage by paying 3, and that creature doesn't untap. He can do this multiple times. Again, very mana hungry. So when I'm looking at this deck, Frank just like Aryan, by the way, needs a lot of mana. And I think, like I said, I think he's going to board in trackers after game one. I think trackers are also going to be difficult for Frank to deal with because Aryan is playing the main. He can kill the Elves of Deep Shadow. He can kill the Scavenger Folk. He can kill the Banshees. He can trade a 2-2 two -two for a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, tracker is just so versatile and so useful that that's definitely going to be a pain for Frank in game one. And like I said, I think he's going to board it in in game two and game three. Now, other two cards in his sideboard that are really, really interesting are the two copies of Hidden Path. Hidden Path, beautiful, stunning, absolutely amazing art, but also a useful card in this matchup. Four green and two, so six, that's huge. But what you get is all green creatures gain Forest Walk. Now, it's a risky card because you're giving Forest Walk to the creatures of your opponent as well. So maybe, you know, Hidden Path can be the end of you, but I'm kind of seeing Hidden Path late game as a finisher for an Alpha Strike. You're, you're playing your Hidden Path, all your creatures, your green ones, gain Forest Walk are unblockable and you just stampede over your opponent. Another card that's interesting in the sideboard here is the Bone Flute. Bone Flute, three to cast. Two and tap, and all creatures get minus one, minus O. Oh. So it's another great card where you can have a situation where when he attacks, he does less damage because you have the Bone Flute. And when you attack, you're not going to activate the Bone Flute. Again, Bone Flute, um, a great weapon against Bog Imp. You know, those 1-1 one -one flyers. With Bone Flute, they have no power left. They deal no damage. Okay, so this is the deck of Frank. We've already looked at the deck of Aryan. There are some minor differences. This is going to be exciting. Let's go to the games. Game number one, semi-finals of the Dark Tournament. And we've got Aryan on the left and Frank on the right. Like I said before, a mirror match. Two black and green decks, very similar. And, uh, ooh, no Elves of Deep Shadow for, uh, for Aryan here. And we do see an Elves of Deep Shadow for Frank. And these little differences could, uh, could be the difference between who wins and who loses with these uh, identical decks. Tapping three here, there is the Lurker. 2-3 creature that cannot be targeted unless it's declared as a blocker or unless it's attacking. And there we see a card that Aryan is playing main and Frank is playing in the sideboard, the tracker. The tracker, of course, a problem. It can take care of that Elves of Deep Shadow. And there we see an attack dealing two damage here. So Aryan is going to drop to 18. Tapping two and he's casting a Felwer Stone. And this is good news for Aryan. No extra creature on the board here, as to be expected, perhaps. He's probably going to kill the elves here, tapping down the tracker and passing turn. No lands here for uh, for Aryan, it seems. And there is an attack by Frank, tapping five. Wormwood Tree Folk, that Felwer Stone, is helping Frank to cast it one turn early. Aryan kind of stuck on lands, really needs an answer now. That is a 4-4 creature and a 2-3 lurker. That means that potentially Frank can deal six damage, dropping Aryan to 10. There we see a spitting slug. That is actually a pretty good answer. Remember, he can give Wormwood Tree Folk Forest Walk for two green. Does take two life when he does that, but maybe that's a pretty good option. He, he could get in there for four. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank. Taking two damage, dropping to 17 and dealing four here to Frank or to Aryan. I think that's a good decision by Frank. And there is another Lurker, even more creatures, and a 2-3 is perfect to block that Spitting Slug, which is a 2-4. There is an Elves of Deep Shadow. And if he can find an Ashes to Ashes, this game could be over really, really quickly. But if he had one, I'm sure he would have cast it before. And if we look at Aryan's side of the board, he just cannot find any lands, only forests, no swamps. Must be kind of frustrating for him. There is an attack. Remember, the um, Wormwood Tree Folk has Forest Walk again. Attacking with both Lurkers here, putting on full pressure. One Spitting Slug on one of the Lurkers and probably is going to take two damage for the other one. Let's see how this will unfold. And it looks like he is blocking one of the Lurkers. 
And then you kind of know that Aryan is in desperation mode when he's doing stuff like this. He's on eight. And now that the tracker is gone, Frank is able to play Scavenger Folk. There is another tracker. That means that next turn, if there will be a next turn, Aryan can use his tracker to kill the Scavenger Folk. But maybe he's kind of forced to blocking it. Oh, there's an Ashes to Ashes. That's it. That's game. I mean, that is the nail in the coffin here for Aryan. And... I mean, Aryan was just very unlucky this first game. Couldn't find any black mana, and that was the end of it. Only three green. That was all that he can find here in game number one. That means a relatively easy victory for Frank here. And these players are going to sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. So that was a really quick game one. Aryan just stumbled on the mana, and there is a force by Aryan pass turn. And again, an Elves of Deep Shadow turn one for Frank. That is pretty good. And there is a Bog Imp. So this time Aryan can find his black mana. The 1-1 one, one Flyer, we talked a little bit about it in the deck tech. I think this is going to be quite strong because there's just not a lot of ways for Frank to deal with this Flyer. And here's taking a damage from his own Elves to cast a Lurker. It's just so nice to see that Elves of Deep Shadow turn one and you just have that three mana play in turn two. That's just super efficient. Attacking with the bucket and dropping to 18. There is a tracker that can again take care of that Elves of Deep Shadow just like it did in game one, by the way. And tracker just being quite strong because it can just take ping away basically all those 1-1 one, one creatures. Now he has four mana. He's going to attack. I am expecting at least a 3-drop here. He's going to go for a 4-drop. There is a Banshee. Ooh, that is interesting. And look at the amount of mana on the side of Aryan. Aryan needs double green to activate Tracker. Does he have mana problems again? He does need a second green. Then he can kill the Banshee. If not, the Banshee is probably going to get killed next turn. He needs a second green here. This is important for Aryan. Needs to find green mana number 2. He's in the tank here. Does that mean he doesn't have it? If he has it, it kind of looks like a no-brainer, right? There is ashes to ashes. Wow, that's the other perfect answer here for Aryan. He is then dropping, of course, to 15, but who cares? And, uh, okay, it looks like he's dropping to 13. There was a mix-up with the scores anyway. It looks like Frank is on 14, it seems, and Aryan is on 13 here. Oh, wow. And this was just uh, really the card that Aryan needed. And there is a Land Leeches and another Elves of Deep Shadows. And let's see if he can now find a second green. No, he cannot. So the Elves of Deep Shadow is going to stick, stick around a little bit longer. There's a Lurker. He's probably going to attack again, of course. Why not? With the Flyer dealing another damage. Dead Bok Imp is doing some serious work here. And it is interesting to see that Aryan is stuck on mana again. When you check his mana base, he is playing with a lot of mana sources. That's not it. He's simply unlucky here in this matchup. And uh, the question is, can Frank really take advantage of it? Taking an, a damage here. Oh, playing an Ashes to Ashes of his own. He cannot target the Lurker, of course. Ooh, gonna go to 7. Attacking here. Oh, that's not a good decision because the Land Leeches is a 2 2 first striker. Or maybe it is, actually. Maybe he just wants to get as much damage in as possible. Remember, Frank is also pretty low now. He's on 7. And, ooh, there is the hack. I believe it's a 1-1 one, one creature and it can regenerate another creature. I'm not sure what it does anymore. It's a card you don't see often. And now the question is, what is Frank going to do? Attacking doesn't seem really to, to do much because of that lurker on the other side of the table, both having a 2-3 lurker. There's Wormwood Tree Folk, and that card can make all the difference, just like it did in game number one. But there's also a Wormwood Tree Folk on the side by Aryan. Wow, Aryan on nine, Frank on seven. This is a close match. Of course, Frank can give his Wormwood Forest Walk, but then he takes two damage, he will drop to five. And Aryan can do exactly the same next turn. And then he can, I mean, he can, he can almost win it. And I'm talking about Aryan just because of this two life difference. Both players really would benefit from a Dark Heart of the Wood. I think if Frank would, would play a Dark Heart of the Wood now, he would probably win this game. But it looks like he doesn't have it in hand. The same thing can be said for Aryan, although Aryan only has two forests, 
where uh, Frank has multiple forests to sack to the Darkheart. Oh, wow, man. This is such a close match. I can just imagine Frank really being in the tank right now. He's like, I am so close, and yet I am so far because I'm on seven. He's on nine. I can give it forest walk, drop to five. But then I'll most definitely take four from his tree folk and I will go to one and I don't want to do that. I don't want to get myself into that position. If he passes turn, I wonder what Aryan's going to do. If he's going to actually give his Wormwood Swamp Walk or Forest Walk. Because that would mean that he would drop to seven, but he can deal four. You know, you take two damage, but you deal four damage. So that's kind of a no-brainer if the life totals weren't this low. Both players really kind of need a way to gain life, and Dark Heart of the Wood is the answer in both of these players' decks to gain that amount of life. Looks like he's kind of grabbing towards his force and then changing his mind again. I really wonder what's in his hand. Two cards in hand for Frank. It looks like two cards in hand as well for Aryan. Wow. This is so incredibly close. Also remember that as soon as one of these players drops on five, it kind of disables the Ashes to Ashes. Both players are playing, I believe, with a full playset of Ashes to Ashes. So they're basically dead cards when you're on five life. And what is he gonna do here? What does he need double black for? Word of Binding? Oh, he's gonna give it Swamp Walk, actually. So he's gonna take two, he's gonna drop two. Five. Okay, he's changing his mind because, of course, he's also going to take a damage then from the Elves of Deep Shadow. That's too much damage, it seems. There is a tracker, so the tracker came in from the sideboard. Two, two creature, two green and tap, and it can fight another creature. Let's see what Aryan's going to do. At least he found some more mana. Three forests, three swamps, he's on nine. What is he going to do? Three cards in hand. Tapping two. Oh, he's giving it swamp walk, it seems. Going to seven, attacking with the Wormwood. Frank dropping to three here. Dark Heart of the Wood. I think this card is going to make all the difference. This Dark Heart of the Wood is basically the winning ticket here for Aryan, I believe. Unless, of course... Frank can also find his Dark Heart of the Wood. So Dark Heart of the Wood in Shaman, one black and green. You can sacrifice a forest to gain three life. And when you're this low on life, it is fantastic. Also remember, Wormwood Tree Folk, you can give it Forest Walk or Swamp Walk, but then you do have to pay two life. So with the Dark Heart, he can kind of keep doing that. There's a Word of Binding! Oh, that does mean that he takes the damage. The problem, of course, is if he goes all in... Because Aryan has the dark card, he can survive that final alpha blow and then he can kill Frank. I guess he's doing it because he has no other choice. Attacking. Oh, actually, he is not playing Word of Binding. Oh, he is, but he made the mistake that he couldn't target the, um, the Lurker. That's, of course, what's happening here. So, yeah, that's it. Oh! Word of Binding cannot target the Lurker because Lurker says it cannot be targeted except for when it's declared an attacker or a blocker. Word of Binding is a sorcery, so there really was nothing that Frank could do. If Frank would have simply passed turn, he would have died as well because of the uh, Swamp Walk and Force Walking Wormwood Tree Folk. Wow, what a game number two. And I mean, Frank was so, so close. Oh, man, but uh, Aryan managed to win this one, and that means that we're going to go to game uh, number three. Game number three, the deciding game, who's going to win this match and who's going to advance to the finals of the Timmy Talks, the Dark Tournament. It's going to be Aryan on the left or Frank on the right. So this is the first time that Frank cannot find an Elves of Deep Shadow turn one. He does find a Flower Stone turn two, so that's a useful ramp for him. There is a swamp as well, so that's kind of nice for Frank. Didn't find a swamp yet, so that means that now he has access to dead color mana as well. And there we see a tracker. The three trackers that came in from the sideboard. And there, ooh, spitting slot 2-4 with the ability to give it first strike for one green and colorless. 
And okay, there we see the Wormwood Tree Folk. 4-4 four, four creature, tap 2 green, give it Forest Walk. Do take 2 damage. Tap 2 black, give it Swamp Walk, and you take 2 damage. Oh, oh, oh Ashes to Ashes. That Ashes to Ashes can make all the difference here. He's going to drop to 15, of course, Aryan, but he's also able to swing in for 2, and he's removed 2 very powerful creatures on the side of Frank. And the question is, can Frank get back, to, uh, back into it from that blow? I mean, he's getting low on cards. He needs to find an Ashes to Ashes on his own. Maybe he has it on board, and maybe Aryan is deciding not to play a second one. Oh, he is. Okay, there's a Wormwood Tree Folk. If Frank has an Ashes to Ashes, he can get back into this. He does need one, though. If he has one, there's a Mace. Okay, Mace is not too bad. Mace can kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. He can send back the Wormwood Tree Folk next turn, only take two from the Wormwood, and it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. He's passing turn. Now, remember, Mace of it is restricted in this format. There we see a double attack. Probably going to see a Mace here on the Wormwood. Going to take two from the Spinning Slug, dropping to 14. There is another Spinning Slug. And Frank really needs an Ashes to Ashes here. The problem with Ashes to Ashes, of course, is that it takes five life from his life total. So he needs to get it soon or else his life total is too low to use it. Another card that may help here is again Dark Heart of the Wood spying him some time. Or, of course, a Spitting Slug of his own because that can block the other Spitting Slug. Okay, here's a Dark Heart of the Wood. So that's still pretty useful. He's got five forests. Of course, he doesn't want to sack all of them. But those five forests equals 15 life, right? So that's a lot. And there we see a Lurker here, the 2-3 creature that cannot be targeted unless it's declared as a blocker or an attacker. And there's just too much pressure here. Frank needs a blocker. I actually think that Carnivore's Plant, I understand why both players aren't playing Carnivore's Plant, but I think it would be quite useful. And again, he wants to use the word of binding here on the Lurker. That's not possible, unfortunately. Of course, next turn he can decide, but now... Now Aryan already knows he's got the Word of Binding, but Word of Binding just not being great in this particular matchup for both players hasn't been really decisive. And Frank really in the tank here, knowing that this is the third game, the decider, and it must be frustrating then to just pass on such a critical moment in the matchup. There is an attack, of course using the maze again, but he's being hit for six. Look at it, he's on four. Dying... He's got the Dark Heart, true. So if he if he now draws into Ashes to Ashes, he can start sacking some stuff. I think this Elves of Deep Shadow is just going to be be a, a jump block, probably. He could decide now to double block the Lurker. But, oh, actually, he can't. He's too low in life. Of course, he's got Dark Heart. So what he could do is double block. Uh, looks like he's just going to jump, though. Jump block with the Elves. Sacking a force, that means that he's going to gain three from that and he's going to lose four. So he's stuck on three life. And let's see what else he can do. It's not looking good for Frank at the moment. When you're sacking your force just to stay alive, you're not in a great, in a great situation. And this is kind of desperation mode, right? Just dealing two damage. This is not looking great. Next turn, you'll have to sack a lot of forests. He's got four forests still, so that equals 12 life. And there is 12 damage. No, 10 damage on the side of Aryan. Just attacking with everything. Going to use the mace on the Wormwood. Going to take six. That means he has to sack two forests to stay on three here. That's exactly what he's doing. Sacking both forests. And then we see even more creatures in the form of a scavenger folk on the side of Aryan. It's looking bad for Frank here. What can actually save him? I don't think there's much. Even an Ashes to Ashes is not going to do much because it's going to force him to sack forests. Another word of binding. Those word of bindings are just very unfortunate for Frank. They can be good, but not at this stage of the game. Not when you're under pressure. The problem, of course, with Word of Binding is that it's a sorcery. If it was instance, then at least he could tap down the attackers. But it's not. It is what it is. I think he's going to die here. He can sack some more forests. Maybe prolong for one more turn. I don't think it's going to work, though. Sacking both forests. Going to go to nine. Going to swing in with everything. That means he can survive one more turn because he's got that maze. Mazing Wormwood, then taking a total of seven damage. Going to go down to two. But, um, yeah... Oh, look at that, using the the um, Scavenger Folk to take care of the Flower Stone. I think that's actually a good move. 
because he's so low on mana at the moment. And look at that, dropping to three. I mean, I don't think there's a way out. It's, yeah, it's inevitable. That's it. So despite the dark heart, there was simply too much pressure on, um, on the life total of Frank here. Congratulations, Aryan. You are moving on to the finals of the dark tournament. And next week, Tuesday, you can see the finals right here on Timmy Talks. And you can see what deck is going to win this the dark tournament. If you're curious about all the decks, by the way, in the description below, you can find a link to the dark tournament website. There's a nice article. There are deck pictures if you're interested in maybe playing this format for yourself as well. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that quite simply, leaving a like, leaving a comment, subbing if you're not a sub yet. And uh, you can also support the channel financially, support the content that I make through Patreon. And that already starts with $1 a month. There's probably a link popping up right now, an info card. Click on that info card and that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And uh, then you will find your name back on the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's go there. Let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go.